Greetings, this is Greg here again. Welcome back to my first idle game force creation. And uh, if you've been following along so far, I really hope you've clicked like, you've clicked subscribe. Uh, this again is a pre-release uh, example of the course that I'm creating. Uh, working through the details, some of this will make it in the final course, but a lot of it won't. Um, but the, I'm making a special offer, you can click below and see where you can pick up this course uh, at a massive discount during pre-release, as well as get access to a dozen of the existing game courses that I've already created. So you can get something now of great value at a great discount, but also uh, you'll get access to this course when it is complete as well. So. Um, as I have said previously, this uh, course comes with a book that I'm working on creating with the course. It has a nice uh, whole set of terms of glossary definitions as well. Let's jump back into the code in our area manager. We have our area profile that we're looking at and eventually we're going to have a mechanism to go to different areas because uh, that's what Clicker Heroes does. But we're probably a long way off from that. I doubt that that'll even be in any of my YouTube content because we got to build up our hero classes first. We got to add sound effects. We're going to be doing a lot of things before we worry about switching areas. But um, and I'll probably even put the prestige stuff in there in the in the the ascension they call it in Clicker Heroes uh, as part of this. So let's let's return back instead of zero here. We want to return back. What I uh, what is called an index to this list, an index being zero, one, two, three, four, five. Um, you could call it a key, but we don't want to just hard code zero in here. We want to use a variable to determine which one of these. So I can say int index equals, and we need a way to get a random number. So we can take random dot range because we want this to be between two ranges, and we're going to start with zero because remember. The first enemy profile we've already proven is zero. So we, we want that to be included. And then how do we get the maximum range? We know what's the upper bounds? And put a semicolon here. And then we come here and replace index over the, the zero. We place zero with index. So what this command does is obviously random is a you know, a library, a class here. It's a, you can see it's a static class in Unity. We'll learn what static means later. And we want to use a random range, meaning that we need to get a, a range from zero to the list of the count of how many enemies are. are. Now, so now we have two enemies now. And so you might think, um, if you're thinking ahead, there might be a few of you are, that you think, wait a second, if I return count, and count is two, wouldn't it be zero, wouldn't this range return zero, one, or two? That would be three items, but we've only got two enemies. But the truth of the matter is, whatever this top range is here, and this time, time it's gonna be two, it's non-inclusive. So it's zero, if you say zero comma two, you're really saying I want zero comma, everything up to two, but not including two. And with an index, that means this right here, this method or this function, this function call right here is gonna return a zero because that's where it starts at. It's gonna return a one because, you know, that's the, the in, inclusive between zero and two, but this count's gonna return two with our current list and it's not gonna include two. So this code will work for us and give us random enemies when we click. And so before we do that, I'm just going to quickly set up a couple more enemies, make it a little more fun. And so after getting in here and just setting up, I set up a loco and I set up an ocol with um, just loco spelled backwards. But we have a couple of new, you know, different hit points for them. Actually, I don't, we don't want them that high. We don't want to click that much. It's just proof of concept. So this will be seven, this will be eight. And now what we just want to do is go into our areas, our forest, and add both them. Why did it do that? Nine. Okay. Add two. And then I can come in here and say loco. And I can say local. And there's the list. We got now four items in the list. And when I run it, we're going to see how that plays out. 
And there we go. We got a random guy. We got Loco. He is first. Abner came next. Then back to Loco. Then Abner. Then Loco. Then Renab. Make sure they all show up at least once. And there's Okul. And there we go. So they all are happening. It's completely random. Every time it's grabbing different ones. Okul seems to be a favorite for a bit there. There he is again. And we're, we're swapping that. There's Abner. There's Renab again. So completely random processes. And you can see our golds going up. And so that's a pretty click slick little way now to have our enemy spawning random you know have our uh, area manager responding man uh, random enemies from this enemy profile list you could create 20 enemies if you wanted um and then obviously by design we're creating a design it's a little bit future proof that uh, we can have multiple areas already is built in as well obviously we'd have some work to wire it in but you're seeing i think from a, um, an, a construction standpoint, a software architecture standpoint, how we're kind of be beginning to build ahead a little bit and not um, corner ourselves in quite so much by, you know, just, I could have created a spawn enemy on the enemy and I could have had a list of enemies on the enemy um, and I could have, you know, found a way to get them from there. But it, breaking it up into, into these other um, components so that the area manager is returning an enemy allows us to not have like one big large class called enemy that just like literally does everything in the game and, and becomes really unwieldy and hard to manage so with that said we're gonna have a lot more to build out and um i hope that you'll keep with it and uh check out my game courses below and i, I really hope that uh if you're if you're a game developer game designer you'll enjoy building these games with me and I look forward to you know having uh, more and more of my students become professional game developers and, and see the amazing games they're making.